Okay, guys, if you're joining me from before, we're just going to continue the look. I'm going to wait for people to start back coming on, and I'll get Josie back on with us. We are doing a makeup tutorial look. We've done the eyeshadow and the eyes. We're now doing the lining part. I see Josie pop back on, so let's add Josie back on now. Good. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, it's good. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Thank you for coming back. So we, we're continuing to do liner. Yes, Jay. Very good. <laughs> the brush is amazingly much easier. <laughs> Yeah, I told you, it's so easy to do liner with a brush. When I have, um, you know, there are times where I have clients with very textured eyes, so I would prefer to use a brush versus the applicator. It just makes it goes on, go on smoother. Hi, Lisa. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Wow, I love this. I love this tip. <laughs> Okay. Normally to do eyeliner, I normally pull my eye and I know that's bad technique. So I yeah. love that I don't have to do it. <laughs> don't pull your eyes because then when you pull your eyes, you have a whole different shape going on. Try to stay away from pulling your eyes. If you want to lift them up, feel free to lift them up and never pull. All right. So I'm going to continue with my line since most people are back on. So the end of my eye, I'm going to connect to make my wing. So I'm just filling in. I love a very fierce cut eye. Okay, that's not cutting at all. <laughs> it's not cutting. No. <laughs> yeah, the trick with using, you need a very thin brush, and it's good to just like, um, if you're not getting like a good thing, you could just use your brush, a clean brush, to make it. Eh. Ish. <laughs> Let me see. So you can use um, some concealer after and just like clean it to, make it, yeah, to make it thinner. Okay. You probably haven't been doing it wrong, um, Kizzy. But everyone's eye shape is different, so you could do it different ways or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to go with my next eye. This blue is actually super gorgeous. And you can see like how much of a difference yeah, it kind of make. like it's so you know just make you, you look very glamorous and beautiful alright so I'm gonna go I'm starting in the middle and I have that space there I'm gonna join that line You remember that game we used to play when we were kids? I can't remember. Is it connect the dots or dots or where you draw all these dots on the page and then you have to draw lines to create the right. dots? I can't remember the name of the game, but it's almost like that. You want to like connect like the the lines to make your cut eye. So. I'm going to go at the end of my box. Yes, that's that game. I'm going to go at the end of my eye and just connect my lines. And I'm going to paint in. You don't want to see any skin. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what you 
muito. You may think that, you know, this is like an entire comedy show maybe. But um, when you practice, you're going to get better at it. And you don't have like the perfect applicator right now. That, that brush is very thick. Ah, uh, it's too thick. So is it that the tip of the wing is supposed to line up with the end of your brow? It should, yes. Let me look for a thinner brush. <laughs> Unless you're like, um, Amy Winehouse and, you know, you want trouble. Okay. Yes, yeah, so... Basically, yeah, fill in the blanks. You want to make sure that there's no skin there, no skin showing on your liner, no eyeshadow showing on your, your liner. My liner is not perfect because I'm not, I'm looking in a phone and not looking in a mirror. So this one is a little thick, but um, yeah, Janelle, you're coming along. You're making progress. <laughs> Good job. Cut and especially if you have hooded eyes, you want to make sure that your line is thinner so your eyeshadow actually shows. Because if I even like look down, you can't, you can barely see um, my eyeshadow. Natasha says she gets the Cleopatra um, eyeliner. That's some fierce eyeliner, honey. Cleopatra, I, I live for Cleopatra. Um, right, so there we have it. All right, next step is you need to teach I me how to clean up the the, the look. <laughs> we're gonna do that after. I'll show you. Okay. Okay. Next step we're gonna do is some. I kind of do things unorthodox at times um, because I'm a perfectionist. So I'm just gonna go with my mascara, and I'm gonna go underneath. I'm just going to do my bottom lashes. You're doing bottom only? Right now. Yeah. Okay. And do you have lashes? I do, but we're not going to see me spend the hour trying to. <laughs> All right, so you can put on your, it's very easy to put on an eyelash, believe it or not. But you can put on your um, mascara. I'm going to explain how to apply a lash. Um, okay. Does anyone find it hard or easy to apply their lashes and what difficulties you have applying your lashes? Let me know so I can help you guys. Um, but it's really, hard. really the easiest thing to do. It's hard getting it to line up and with the line as well as to stick. Like, I, I never, I don't know. I just never get it. Applying makeup is two things. Trust in the process and patience. Once you have those two things, your makeup is going to come out perfectly fine. Um, and just always remember that you are the expert because you're doing, you're the expert of your own face. Nobody knows your face, your, your lines, the, the, the things that you go through with your skin. Nobody knows it like you. So in your mind, just always remember, I am the professional makeup artist doing a beautiful canvas. Um, all right. So I'm going to be using dual glue. I like dual glue because it is a latex glue and it's really easy to remove. Um, yeah, that's about it. So I like to put my glue. Um, you know, you can put it on something, put it on the back of your hand. The trick to applying your lash is making sure that your glue is tacky and also that you're measuring your lash on your eye before applying it. So I have small eyes, so I always like to measure because not every um, lash fits. So I'm just going to measure to see if this fits on my eye. If not, I'll have to cut it. Go back a little bit and I'll see what you're doing. No, no, no. I'm just measuring. So I just use the eyelash to measure. Uh -huh. 
to see if it fits on my eye. And then if it's a little too long, I cut the ends. So the shorter <laughs> piece is always the inner piece. And then the longer piece is the outer piece when you put on your lash. Hold on one second, man. Alexa, play music. <laughs> So we're measuring eyelashes, guys. Um, I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to cut my ends slightly. Right? Um, a great tip is also using a tweezer if you're a beginner. So apply. Tweezers really do help. So I'm going to apply my glue. And because you're doing it for yourself, you could blow. <laughs> or you could just prepare your next lash in the meantime. So the glue gets tacky. <laughs> if your glue is not tacky, if your eyes are wet, it's not going to stick. A great tip if you do have, um, you know, if you're applying and you're tearing up and you want your lash to stick, you could take a little translucent powder. Um, how are you doing there, Janelle? Struggling. <laughs> no, you're not struggling. You're the expert. Say, I am the expert. I am the expert. <laughs> yes. Think positive. That's true. I believe in positive thinking. Yeah, once you think positive, your lash gonna pop up blue before you know it. Then nobody can talk to you. Because then you're gonna be Dr. Jan Janelle uh, Jackman, professional makeup artist, right? <laughs> blow, 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 blow. If your lashes know, a great tip also, I'm going to be giving a lot of tips, is to just wiggle your lash, like make it like a U, and wiggle so it fits right into your. Um, Perfect eye shape. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> right? So you want to look down. How you know if it's tacky? Mine's still wet. It's going to be wet, but... Oh, my um, tweezer has... Oh, my hand's so shaky. You can stick it now. <laughs> yeah, this is what happens. Stick the middle first, Jay. Stick the middle first and then stick the ends. Where is it? <laughs> it fell. <laughs> And then stick your ends. See? Boom. How that was boom, boom. You yeah, want nothing on me. Oh, gosh. Nobody on Dr. Janelle Jackman, <laughs> pro makeup artist. Hello. All right. So now that our lashes are on, because we're fabulous, we're going to stick our next lash. In hindsight, I should have used a more dramatic lash, but okay. <laughs> it's okay. Center. Oy, 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 oy. Yeah. Take your time, take your time. You want to stick the center first? I'm being attacked by the glue. <laughs> yeah, 
This is and why I don't mess with your lashes. They're blue. <laughs> you have blue dry skin. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I think that you're doing a pretty decent job. Um, Sean, and I think you're going through what most women go through. But guys, if you think negative, I guarantee you. I know it sounds crazy, but if you think negative, your lash is not going to go on. Think that lash is going to go on. Call yourself a professional and it will go on. Just trust the process. Whew. Let your eyes dry. Don't mess with the lash. To feel like the end of my world. Disappear. Okay. Now, we have lashes. Mm -hmm. The last step will be to apply mascara underneath your lash. So, as you can see, if you look underneath, you can see my natural lash. You want to apply mascara, but you want to let it dry. So, we're going to yeah. move on to the face for now. I'm touching this as well. Okay. <laughs> the next step, because we already primed, I don't know if anybody missed it. Um, earlier, I used the Natural Radiance Primer from MAC. This specific primer is good for controlling oil throughout the day and giving your skin a glow. There are a million trillion types of um, primers on the market. Um, so, you know, whatever floats your boat, basically, with primer. My brush, my foundation brush I'm going to use is the 170 brush from MAC. I absolutely love this brush. I think this brush is probably $35 or $45. I'm not so sure. But um, it's a very dense brush. So it gives a very airbrush finish. Jay, let me see. What are your view on this? <laughs> you can use a beauty blender too. I like beauty blenders too. Um, you know, it's all about preference. What, what floats your boots, as I would say. Guys, I have lashes on. Don't talk hey, to me. You can't talk to her. You cannot talk to her. Um, my foundation, I have all my foundations and little things because I travel a lot. Um, I'm going to use the NC44 Studio Fix Fluid. This one is a full coverage foundation. Although my skin is pretty, um, you know, even, I still like a full coverage. Yes, they do. I, who is this? Um, MG Dean. I'm not sure what your name is, but thank you. That's Misha. That's my sister. <laughs> oh, hi, sis. All right. So I'm going to start applying. And you always want to apply your foundation in a downward motion, guys. Never up because when it goes up, it goes into your pores. So always down. If you're a person that has, you know, open pores or bigger pores, always try to like use a very cold washcloth and just press it on your face. It helps to minimize your pores. So I'm applying my foundation. Jay, do you wet your beauty blender? I wet it before I started. Um, it's okay. probably a little not so wet, <laughs> but I did and wet it before. What brand do you use? Do you use the Beauty Blender brand? I actually have that here, but right now I'm using MAC. The one we actually bought together. Uh, okay, so that is actually Beauty Blender. The, the, the sponge, right? You're talking about? The sponge, but remember the time I saw you in MAC and we picked out uh, foundation and uh, mm -hmm. something else. Yeah, right. okay. What type of foundation are you using? This is the MAC Studio Fix. Okay. I think this is NW45. I used to be I used to use NC50, but you told me that wasn't my color. Yeah, I feel like now you could probably use NC50 because you look a shade lighter, but the NW45 looks great. Okay, so apply my foundation. Guys, please, you always want to make sure that you Press your foundation around your hairline because you want it to be nice and blended all around. Try to get it a little in your neck. On your chin, for my case, my double chin. 
<laughs> Lord Jesus, I try not to complain about it too much. And now that we're in quarantine, like I have a triple chin. That's some okay. good eating. Yeah, girl. If you notice, like I just used my foundation and cleaned up because I use the orange color, which is good. Orange eliminates any type of purples or blues under the eye. So, you know, it's kind of like a two-in-one. For you, Jay, you want to make sure you clean up that purple because you don't want under your eyes looking like October 31st. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is my foundation. Very smooth and clean. Next step, I'm going to use the Juvia's Place um, concealer under my eyes as a highlighter. So I'm going to create like a V. And I use different colors depending on what type of look I'm going for. And you could use your, um, that's a good concealer too, the um, LA Girl. That's LA Girl, right? This, no, this is our kid. Oh, <laughs> 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 um, my, the shade I'm using is number 16 from Juvia. I think nobody talks to me. I actually do have the other I girl here. <laughs> RK, but it works. Okay, it's doing what it needs to. This is the other girl, but <laughs> I would think your shade. Let me see your shade. Hmm, I'd have to see it in person. Is it a bit too bright? Hmm? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Some use another brush. Another thing, living, living here, oh, you have the French. You have to use the French shades because you use a different shade in this. Warmer months versus a different shade in the colder months. No, but that's fine. If you use the shade, you can actually mix it with a little of your foundation to warm it up a little bit. There's always ah. a correction that you can do. I'm using a sponge, my free sponge from work, guys. You can use a brush, beauty blender. Um, this is also a good brush to use for your highlighter, the 270S brush. So... Hi Lola, how are you? Welcome. So Lola, just... the first half is on Instagram like uh, stories. You can check out the first half. Don't worry if you're late. We're gonna post this after. All right. I like you see my um my concealer. I'm bringing it onto my nose. And that's gonna help me to give a natural contour look. So Janelle, you see what I'm doing here? I like a triangle sponge because then I could go and clean up my wing. Ah. Yeah, but you can use like the tip of your sponge to just lightly take your time and clean up. And yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very light. And just bring it down. Bring it down like this and blend it out. Mm-hmm. And you want to make sure you blend that out. Candy, what candy adds? Um, I wouldn't say highlighting under your eyes is super essential, but I would say concealing it is definitely essential, especially for women of color. We tend to have, um, you know, discoloration under the eyes naturally. We inherit that from our ancestors. So concealing under the eyes just helps to make you look more awake, um, you know, and it completes, it's part of the completes in your makeup look. So. Look at that cut I know now. Hey. <laughs> See how it cleans it up? So never fret and worry yourself too much. You can always, there's always tips and tricks. Okay, so we are highlighted. And this is this powder. It's my absolute favorite powder ever. 
This is That's a must have in your makeup kit. It's the MAC Mineraline Skin Finish. I'm actually going to use this to warm up my skin a little bit. I'm using the Dark Deepest, which is the darkest shade. Um, which is the shade that you would use, Jay? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to use it around my hairline. And, you know, it's kind of like it gives like a contour effect. And I'm also going to use it as blush. So I try to eliminate some steps. Okay, so what about people who are darker that would not work to contour? What would we use? You can use a contour uh, stick. Um, you can use uh, concealer. You can use a darker powder. Contouring is not absolutely necessary. Um, the reason why I'm using a darker powder around my hairline is because I obviously love taking selfies like everybody else and or taking pictures. Um, and then when you take pictures, you have this ring around your face looking like Bobo the Clown. So we don't want any of that. So it's important to just take a darker powder and just lightly, not too dark, make sure it's nice and blended. Use a very fluffy brush or your beauty blender. I would use the base of your beauty blender. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so make sure that you're nice and blended and your pictures come out super flawless. What else you did um, besides here? No, we're going to go. So you want to go around. And then I'm going to use my powder as a blush. So I'm going to go on my cheeks. And of course, you want to smile a little bit so you can see the... Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Great job. Can't you use your foundation brush for your concealer? Somebody's asking. You absolutely can. But then don't go and try to put on more foundation because then you'll be mixing it with a much lighter shade. All right. This is the stuff that I, um, I have two minds about it because it's not absolutely necessary. Um, but I think it's the way that you do it, I should say. It is necessary, but it's the way that you do it, which is, quote, unquote, setting your concealer or baking. I don't think baking is necessary. So I'm going to use it. It's not necessary because then when you take pictures, you get so much flashback if you don't apply it properly and things like that. I'm going to use the Laura Mercier translucent powder. And I'm just going to go under my eyes. How do you feel about Sasha Buttercup? Hmm? Um, so I was, I got caught up in the hype of Sasha Buttercup. I really loved it at first until like I started taking pictures. If you don't apply it properly, you get a lot of flashback. So you want to make sure that you don't leave it on super long. <laughs> but it's a, it's a good product. I think I put too much. <laughs> yeah. So you see, with your with your powder, you definitely don't want to rub it in like that. That's the worst thing you could do. When you're setting, you want to tap it on lightly. Yeah, light lighter than that. Uh, yeah. And then I recommend using a brush. Okay, let me get a brush. <laughs> Oh, I just put powder all over my stuff. Mm. What were you going to ask, Lola? Yeah. And you want to create like a V. Because if you only put your baking powder under the eye like that, you're going to look like you have um, band-aids. This powder that I just used was the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I love it. It's really good with um, black skin. Um, a lot of products have talc in it, which is not good for melanated skin. Talc looks like 
flour, basically, if you take a photo. So you want to stay away from products that have a lot of talc. Oh, yeah, I do like Laura better than Sasha, which I, I learned to love it better. Okay, perfect. I forgot when we were doing like our little contour. I just like to put a little contour on my nose. I don't do any crazy process. I just use my brush and I kind of squeeze it together like this. So get any powder and just come down the sides of my nose. Unless I'm doing a client, then I would like go in. But for me, very, very. Then I take Milani is good, so Milani is a very good brand. I just go back with the edge of my to create like a highlight, and then I brush that. I just dust that out immediately. I like really. Flawless makeup. I really don't like dimensional makeup where you know you're seeing a lot of lines and stuff like that. And when you leave product on long, it tends to create lines. Um, so I would blend that out immediately. Yes, transparent powder. So now that our eyes are probably dry, um, remember earlier I was speaking about applying mascara under your lashes. Yes. So you want to just pull up your eye a little and blend in your natural eyelash with your lashes so it doesn't show because your eyelashes are naturally um, lighter than a eyelash that you purchase so you want to make sure it's blended what do you think about fancy foundation and powder for colored women um honestly fancy foundation or like any foundation it's really a preference i've tried the fancy foundation um it was a little too orange for me maybe i use you know the wrong skin tone um the wrong color so, I, you know, I told myself, I'll go and try it again. But I honestly, I'm a Mac girl when it comes to foundation. I love um, the Mac Studio Fix Fluid. And I love the um, Pro Long Wear Waterproof Foundation. To me, it's the best foundation. And I'm like, if it's not broke, why fix it? I'm not going to use Quincy mm -hmm. because, you know, it's Rihanna and I love her. I'll probably use, you know, her lipsticks and liners and different things. If that answers your question. Okay, so that eyelash make a big difference, boy. I want more dramatic eyelashes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. I <laughs> we could, Chanel, we can use that one when outside is open and we have a little date. You know, we go for a little cocktail. You could bring out the, uh, the hot girl lash. All right, <laughs> next up. Jay is do you have highlighter? I do somewhere, yes. Okay. I love highlights and I love to glow. So I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills um highlighter. This one, but there's a lot of there's a lot of highlighters out there. I prefer a highlighter that's smooth and not glittery because I want it to look very natural on my skin. Oh, the one I so have is extremely glittery. I mean, if you love it, I love it. So I'm just gonna apply on my cheekbone. Yes, Chanel, that looks amazing. Don't love talk it. Can't <laughs> talk to her. Put some on my nose bridge. Some of my cupids bow, not crazy. We don't need, I don't know 
know why girls i mean whatever floats your boat again but i don't know why people just make a mustache with their highlights or that is uncomfortable for me but whatever um again if you like it i love it very good i need to blend it more yeah you want to make sure that your highlights is blended so try to use a fluffy brush the brush you were using before is more of a foundation brush and will give a dense look, so. No, it's not fluffy. You see, I really need you to come and organize my makeup stuff. <laughs> yes, whenever you're ready. It's part of my... I have things, but it's just... <laughs> it's part of my 2020 service. <laughs> I'm putting it out there into existence. Exactly. Claim it. Hmm? All right. So now that we finished with most of our look, Janelle, is, do you guys have any questions for Janelle about your but JJ? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> you know about fertility, about like vaginal health. Definitely reach out to her, send her DM. You know, if you're now tuning in, um, Janelle is a gynecologist and she specializes in fertility. So if you've been trying to have a baby and can't, definitely reach out to her. She can give you options and help you with that. She is an amazing person. Thank you. Yes, she's the sweetest, sweetest, sweetest. Okay, so my favorite part is anybody that follows me knows that I love doing lip tutorials. Um, I picked out two lips and I want... Everyone who's watching to decide which lip I should choose. If I should do red or nude, let me know in the comments. Oh. I choose nude. Let's see what people choose. I'm going to go quickly to get my um, lip stuff. Okay. Also, look at my dress. Anyway. Oh, your dress is super, very springy, super cute. Making me want to go for a uh, mimosa right now. <laughs> okay, I see a nude, 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 nude. Yeah, nude. it's nude. <laughs> okay, let's do nude. Um... So, because I'm going to be using a matte color, I am going to just make sure that my lips are hydrated, but not wet. And the color I'm going to use is, I was actually looking for my, um, my chestnut lip liner. I have been neglecting my makeup, just a FYI. Janelle could tell y'all... <laughs> Janelle was reaching out to me about this, and I'm like, I do not feel motivated. I feel so depressed. Not seriously depressed. I've just been like, whatever. Like, we in a pandemic, sleeping whole day, up all night. So I've been neglecting my makeup. So I'm happy that Janelle encouraged me to do this. And this I'm is happy exactly why we're doing this. <laughs> right. And I'm happy that Candice braided my hair because now I can actually do makeup because before I was looking like a pandemic. I was looking like COVID-19 before yesterday. I promise you. All right. So I cannot find my chestnut, so I'm going to use cork. If you are warmer skin tone, I suggest using chestnut because it will show up on your skin tone. So I'm going to use cork lip liner with Lady Be Good Matte Lipstick from MAC Cosmetics. Okay. I'm just going to line my lips. And as you can see, I'm going to blend it, blend it out, and then I'm going to go on top, 
Oh, by the way, today, guys, again, I keep it real. I shaved my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go on live with this thick ass mustache. I usually do um laser hair removal, but I've been at home for like almost two months now, and I kind of get my laser hair removal. So I had to shave my mustache before this live. So this is how much I love you guys. I shave my mustache. Um, but that's hilarious. So you want to make sure if you have facial hairs, ladies, please take care of it. We are not meant to be walking around looking like Mr. Josie or whatever the case may be, right? I left uh, my mustache right on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see it. Don't worry. It's covered in foundation. No, I'm, a very, I'm a very hairy person, so I definitely had to take care of that. I have no shame in my game. If you... You know, my boyfriend, no. He'd be like, damn, you need to go get a lineup. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, so, just gonna line. I like a full lip. Um, thank you, God, for making me black. I have full lips. Um, but I like an extra, extra full lip. So, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna line outside of my lip. Oh, Rashida. Um, yeah, you're doing a really good job. I, Janelle, I know you're really good with lips. You always wear a popping lip. Yeah. Yeah, I rarely wear nudes, but I'm going to try a nude today. Okay. And I was telling, I was talking to my friend today, and we were talking about my mole, my beauty mole. I, I have one too. Yeah, I got, but I had, you all had that all your life though, right? Yeah. I got that this all all like when I was 25. Isn't That's that so true? Or probably 23. I never, I never, um, I never had this more before, but thank you Mo for popping up. I love it. Thank you, Janae. <laughs> all right. So. So you see a line um, on top of my lip line. Yes, beauty molds are so cute. Although they could be cancerous, God forbid. But it's beauty well, if, if your mole is increasing, like changing its size, changing its appearance, changing its color, those are the things that you want to look out for to give you like maybe of concern. But if you've had the same mole consistent for all your life, it should be fine. Yes, doctor. You see, you guys, you guys get it. Some you, you guys get it. It's, it's a one-stop shop right now. Everything, That's beauty and know. beauty and health. <laughs> yeah, beauty and health. That's really, really good to know because I never knew. I always hear people say that most could be cancerous, but I never knew. That's how you would um, check out to see if it is. All right, so I'm gonna apply my lip. And I'm just gonna go in the middle. I'm going to blend. <laughs> that looks really nice. Thank you. This is a color pop. And the color is called Clueless. Love it. Ooh. No, actually, I've never used it before. <laughs> I'm ready to go out. Somebody call Trump and tell. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you tell go out. <laughs> do not call Trump for anything, okay? Josie, somebody wants to know what's the color you're using. Um, this On is Lady B. Lady Be Good from My Cosmetics. I'm gonna show you guys how I look in the light too. Um, I'm actually in my bathroom with everything looking crazy. So I was trying to figure out how to set up comfortably. So I bought this thing, let me show you guys, on Amazon. 
Oh, yeah, on my mirror, and then you could charge your phone. So I just have it hooked up here, and I have my phone on top of it, so you guys could see me and Janelle. Well, me, because Janelle is not in my house. <laughs> <laughs> We're all practicing. Yes, so I'm a very important part. Uh, And uh, more lips without going to the surgery. All right. So let me bring my phone over here so you guys can see in the lights. Hold on, let me just hook this up. second let me just take this off. sorry guys for all the commotion well for me this is as much light as we will get <laughs> so Hello. all right so, let me take off my braids Janelle you did such a fantastic job thank um, you let me Pat my hair because there's nothing to take <laughs> off. <laughs> Pat your hair, girl. Pat your hair. Short hair, don't care. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, do you guys have any questions? Um, when quarantine is over, book your appointments with me. Get your face slayed. If you want to learn how to do makeup, I do one-on-one -on -one classes. So it's very hands-on and we do step-by-step. -step. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to look into doing personal shopping so you could bring your makeup bag and we could shop um, and find some things that is customized for you. Janelle, and Janelle is going to be my first client. She's going to be my first guinea pig. <laughs> If it happens soon, we can actually do a live on that as well. How to oh, like weed out your makeup. We definitely can do um, a live where we can like record everything and, you know, do like a nice video. But um, true, yeah. I also want to do a, a makeup class um, with like a group makeup class. So, you know, there's a bunch of things that I am going to do. I, I don't want to do it. I am going to do it. Um, when outside opens. So, oh, and I wouldn't be able to save this live, guys. It will be saved on Janelle's page. So you would have to watch it on Janelle's page. Janelle, tell them about the contest one more time. So uh, thank you all for joining us and following Josie's wonderful makeup tutorial. I hope mm -hmm. that most of you were doing it with us. So we have a $100 in makeup giveaway as our grand prize. So to be able to be eligible for this prize, you have to like both of our Instagram page, share the ad. Um, you should have shared the ad. Tag three friends as well as show us your picture of your finished look that you were doing with us. So all pictures have to be sent within the next hour to be qualified because I don't want you to like now be trying to do it. <laughs> it should have been done at the time with us. So we are giving you, you know, an always some leeway. So just private message us, um, either one of us, your finished pictures, and then Josie and I will go through the pictures and choose one winner. And Josie will Yay! actually specially um, decide the makeup based on you as the individual. So don't worry. If you have lighter skin tone, darker skin tone, you're not going to get something that doesn't suit you. She will choose the makeup that will suit your skin tone and the needs of your skin. Okay? Yes, so excited. I can't wait to give away some of my makeup. I was actually gonna like just give away my makeup to a friend. And I was like, why not have some contests and you know, collaboration? Right. If there's anybody out there that wanna collaborate, you know, message me. Um I'm really the type of person. I just want good vibes, good energy, you know. Um, let's spread a good message out there, whether it's true makeup. You know, people don't think makeup is that serious, but it's that serious. It is that serious. <laughs> and Janelle, I know that, you know, we wanted to talk a little bit about, um, 
you know, infertility and stuff like that. We didn't get much time to talk about right. um, that. But I actually have a question for you. Um, you know, and I know some, some people on here are already moms or whatever, but I'm not a mom. So my question is, if I want to have a baby, um, what do you think I should start doing to prepare my body? Okay, that's actually a pretty good question. So especially now during Corona, um, time where we may not be up and about or like trying to physically have a baby now, but we want to do preparation and things. So many things we can do is, well, we're one Overall health is good in preparation for a baby. So mm -hmm. eating well, having a good diet and a well-balanced diet, it doesn't have to be one thing over the other, but just trying to get each food group as well, drinking lots of water and exercise. That's the first basic thing that we can do in terms of preparing our body, just being overall healthy ourselves. If you smoke, not saying you particularly, but if anyone smokes, you want to cut out smoking, not cut down, but cut out because cigarette smoking could be very harmful in pregnancy as well as it could decrease fertility as well as if you are a heavy drinker you want to cut down drinking because this can affect your fertility as well <laughs> all of us who are like young women in the reproductive age groups we should definitely um be on a um multivitamin that has folic acid you should be taking folic acid all the time because okay. in case of pregnancy and not all pregnancies are planned so in case of pregnancies um folic acid does help into the development of the baby's spine it present prevents some um, what we call neural tube defects so we advise everyone who can possibly get pregnant to be on folic acid and you can just take any multivitamin should have folic acid in it um so these are like very basic things that we can do if you are actively trying to get pregnant um knowing your cycle is important so anyone who's actively trying to get pregnant right now knowing your cycle meaning how many days is your cycle from beginning of one to the beginning beginning of next average is 28 to 30 but realistically normal is anywhere from 21 to 35 mm -hmm. and just having an idea knowing when you ovulate and if you ovulate so ovulation is a process where we release the egg, which is going to give us our chance to be pregnant. So knowing that will best determine when best to have sexual intercourse if we're actively trying to get pregnant. If you're actively trying to get pregnant too, obviously stopping birth control pills, not using condoms, and removing your IUDs or Implanon are all things you would have to do. And it seems like that would be the obvious, but sometimes people take it for granted, especially if you have an IUD, you don't think about it too much. So these are right. basic tips. Um on different ways you can prepare your body during this time or any time uh, for pregnancy conception. And it's overall health in general. So it's just good in general to have these, to do these things naturally. Okay. I have a, a fun question. Um, this, is like, <laughs> this is like a superstitious question. Trinidadians always say, I don't know if they say it in other Caribbean islands, but is it true that depending on your sexual position determines uh the sex of the baby absolutely not <laughs> the only thing that determines the sex of the baby is the sex of the sperm so we women have no control of the sex of the baby right. we always provide an egg and an egg will always give us an x chromosome so women we are xx we will always present an egg sperm could be x or y and depending on if you provide a, the, the sperm sorry is an x sperm then in combination with your x egg you'll get a girl because xx is female and if the sperm is a y sperm and in combination of with your x egg xy will give you a male so realistically a lot of times especially in certain cultures people talk about um <laughs> you have husbands leaving their wives and like certain middle eastern cultures because they keep bringing girls but it's dude's fault <laughs> it's not it's not wife right. you know i know, um, but I know. yeah there's nothing really That's to not really something. help with your sex okay good that's good to know because you know growing up you hear people like if you on top or if you're from the back it depends or whatever the case may be so we just wanted to clear the air with that <laughs> my other question is um you know the tonic um this tonic from trinidad oh my god what's the name of it um teasan you know of the tonic teasan I heard of tea. Is that like a, something to cleanse? Yeah. So a lot yeah. of people when you do a course of tea, then you will get pregnant right away. I wanted to know if you could shed some light on that, if you know. 
I don't know offhand because I really not a hundred percent sure what Tizan has in it, but I'm almost sure that it's probably not substantiated. <laughs> but I would actually look into it, and I can post um something about it under our ad if I find anything okay. on it. But off the bat, I don't think it will be true. But I I don't a hundred percent know. Okay, yeah, because a yeah. lot of people are like, oh yeah, I took Tizan. That's how I got pregnant. So you know, Unlikely. I don't know. <laughs> Un unlikely, very unlikely. That's it was coincidental. <laughs> and um, before we go, is there any specific foods that you recommend that will increase your fertility or boost your fertility as a woman? So definitely eating a balanced diet. But if you increase like your vegetables and your fruits, uh, that helps in terms of there are certain fruits that people associate with certain aspects of infertility. But we have to remember too that in terms of infertility. Different people have different things that can go wrong. So in a nutshell, in terms of a man, a man has to provide sperm. <laughs> so the biggest question with him is whether he has sperm, if he's making sperm or not. If the track, meaning the track to get out of the penis, if that is open and the sperm can get out, and if when he ejaculates, he you know ejaculates sperm in the seminal fluid, that's really it with men. Um, and when you analyze the sperm, obviously the quality of the sperm makes a difference as well. So it's a much simpler process for men. They just really need to give us the sperm. With women, <laughs> we that's have to. That's all we need from you, man. That's, that's all, all we need from you. <laughs> <laughs> with women, it, it gets a little more complicated because we're talking about you have an ovary. For the ovary to produce an egg, the brain has to communicate with the ovary. So if something's going wrong with the brain, that processes out. Then if everything is fine, you know, the brain produces a substance FSH. It starts to produce the follicles. Follicles have eggs in them. Uh, the follicle gets big. The brain now has to produce something to make that follicle rupture, that rupture itself and release the egg. Once the egg is released, it has to be picked up by the fallopian tube. So the tube has to be open. And then you would have had to have sperm nearly around the time of you releasing that egg so that the sperm will be ready and waiting in the uterus or in the fallopian tube so that when the egg is picked up in the fallopian tube, you know, the sperm will fertilize. <laughs> and then the last the <laughs> Sorry. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, your um, uterine lining has to be ready to receive the pregnancy. So for women, it's several steps of um, the process that could potentially go wrong. So having a baby is a big miracle. Just seeing how intricate it is that, you know, being, being alive right now, it's like so many things, a million billion things had to come together for us to be here. So it's just a sheer miracle that we're here today. And it's the same yep. steps. So like getting pregnant is a lot. So for different people, depending on what your problem may be, the advice to how to get pregnant or what you can do to boost it may be slightly different, which is why like, if you've been trying for over a year, it is good to seek extra help. That's really the definition of infertility. When you've been trying to get pregnant and actively trying, not on birth control, um, sexual intercourse without a condom, at least three to four times a week, and you still haven't gotten pregnant for a year, that is what we define as infertility. Fertility, and we sort of change the time frame depending on your age. So if you're 35 and less, it's one year. If you're over 35 to 40, it's six months. If you're oh, wow. and we can start, you know, waking you up to treat for infertility because your window, your fertility drops as you go older. So our time frame shortens. Hmm? Okay, that is like really, really good information. Um, I'm like trying to soak everything all in now. I don't know if anybody on live has any questions. Um, don't be ashamed. You know, this is, you know, open forum for us to learn with each other and, you know, learn about our bodies and learn what we should do if we're trying to have children or just take care of our vaginas. But this was very informative. Thank you, Chanel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, no very, very, very informative. Of course, I have yeah, like a trillion fun. questions. I do see yeah, a growing up. What you're should you do? Up. I'm breaking up? Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, I think we're also ending. It's it's finishing in 23 seconds. So what should you do to try spot having a baby sure and birth control? The same thing. Health, overall health is the same thing. And health of both partners, not just one, as well as when you're ready to get pregnant, obviously coming off of birth control. We have nine seconds, guys.